Today we're joined by Chris Jansen. He's an analyst specializing in the Middle East, particularly Syrian-Iranian relations. And he also founded the Syrian Friendship Association here in Belgium about four years ago. Thanks very much, uh, Mr. Jansen, for joining us today. Uh, the first question I'd like to ask to establish uh, the basis of your opinion. Um, you established this association, uh, Syrian Friendship. Does that mean you were considered pro-Assad as you had been portrayed in the Belgian media? I'm considering me as pro-Syria, pro-Syrian people. I'm convinced that the only way to get out of this crisis, out of this bloodshed, is by following the path of reform, not the path of violence. So if I say I'm pro-reform, I don't say I'm pro-Assad. But if you look to the reality, it's the Syrian government who, who also is willing to follow this path of reform. Now you've written and said that the armed uprising in Syria has been uh, supported or started from the outside. But do you also acknowledge the fact that the Syrians from inside want change? And what, what is the basis of your analysis on this? I do believe is that the violence, what we are seeing now, this has nothing to do with reform. This has to do with destroying the people. Um, I'm also convinced and um, I have a lot of testimonies from, from people in Syria that a lot of the, the what they call the rebels, the members of the of, uh, Syrian Free Army, as a matter of fact, they are foreigners. I mean, this is not reform and, and Syrians are not interested in this. The Syrian people are a very um, peaceful, peaceful people and they managed to live together for centuries, centuries um, without any problem. So the violence we're seeing now, it's not a Syrian product. I went to Dara, um, Dara which, um, uh, which was a hotbed the year before where the trouble started. Um, also Dara, it's near to the Jordanian border. I, it's not a coincidence that the trouble started at the border, at the border town. Because this underlines once again the influence from abroad. I mean, if the current situation in Syria was really uh, a, a Syrian or, or, or a Syrian problem, the trouble would have started from in Hamma or Homs. A lot of uh, outside forces and governments are interested de to destroy Syria. Why? Because you have to remember Syria has a very strategic position in the, the area, in the Middle East, in the region. I think the, the main target, is, as a matter of fact, is Iran. But because Iran is such a powerhouse in the region, it's so strong, they know that to take out Iran, first we have to take out Syria. And I'm quite convinced if they would succeed to destroy Syria, the next target will be Hezbollah in Lebanon. And when these, these two allies are taken out, they will concentrate 100% on Iran. But who are you referring to when you say they? I mean, to my opinion, the United States and their allies, mm -hmm. because they have their strategic interest in that region. Mm -hmm. um, also to, a lot of people talk about oil, but you have to know, Syria, it's not rich in oil. They have some oil, but it's not rich. But of course, the real oil is in Iran, is in uh, Saudi Arabia. And, but Syria can be a transit country. Um, you also have to know that there are huge gas reserves in the former Soviet Union. I mean, the, 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 the Central Asian states of the former Soviet Union. So they have uh, huge gas reserves. And I think you have to sit in this context. How do you confirm the identity of the rebel fighters as you claim that they are coming from the outside, they're foreigners? How do we have proof of that? Because they found a lot of uh, proof of this, like uh, when people died I'm in, in homes or now in Aleppo, they find uh, identity cards, passports of uh, foreign people. Um, they, uh, they capture people with a foreign accent. You really have mercenaries who are doing it for the money, but you also have now Al-Qaeda, which is active in uh, Syria, um, because they hope to 
to find a new, you know, a new uh, base, to, to establish a new base over there. Let's just briefly look at Turkey's uh, role in all of this. Uh, historically, Turkey and Syria have had good relations. What is the interest um, in Turkey being rather aggressive now uh, against Syria? What, is the, what lies in it for them to see unrest in Syria? As a matter of fact, we're already seeing this because um, at this moment, the Kurdish region in Syria or the, the people in the Kurdish region in Syria, they already got a lot of uh, self-government from the government in Damascus. And, and of course, Turkey is not happy with this uh, evolution. Why this change of mind? Why are they so um, anti-Syria now? I think there are different reasons. It can be true that they still have this Ottoman dream, this Ottoman aspirations to make of Turkey again a, uh, a powerhouse, which it once was, once was in the region um, during the Ottoman era. Um, another factor is that um, the factor of the Muslim Brotherhood. They are not really anti-Western because the, the origin of the Muslim Brotherhood, um, they are what we call uh, mercantile. So they are interested in free trade with Europe, with the United States, with the Western world. I mean, we see now in Egypt the Muslim Brotherhood. We know that the Turkish government, also the president, is also pro-Muslim Brotherhood and maybe they are hoping to establish a new government in Syria also uh, pro-Muslim uh, Brotherhood for economical, economical reasons and also political reasons of course because I, uh, you cannot really split this. Now you said that the ultimate target in this geopolitical story is Iran. What is, and this is not the first time that this uh, opinion has been voiced, what is your analysis on this where Iran is concerned? It's very clear to me, um, not only to me, to a lot of people, that the uh, ultimate purpose is to destroy the Iranian regime. Because in the opinion of the Western world, it's a hostile regime, hostile to the Western world. I don't think this is true, because I've visited also many times Iran, and I can assure you that the Iranian government is a very rational government. The Iranian government always said the nuclear program is a civilian program. While in the West they say no, the ultimate purpose is to get an atomic bomb or a nuclear weapon. And then they told me, why should we need a nuclear weapon? I mean, even if we manage to make one nuclear weapon, there is a difference between having a nuclear weapon and to be capable to deliver it. So there is a big technical step between these two phases. And they say even if we have one nuclear weapon and they think we're going to use it, the American government and their allies, they will bomb us to the Middle Ages. So they have no interest in, in their country being destroyed. So they are much more rational than most people here in the West think. Now all the opinions you voiced today, it's, it's contrary to the general narrative that we find in a lot of the press, a lot of the analysis here in Belgium or in Western Europe. How is your work and your opinions received in this part of the world? Unfortunately, most people here in Belgium, but I can also say in a broader picture, the Western world, Europe and the United States, they're not really aware, they don't know really the situation in the Middle East. What they know about it, it's based on cliches, you know, like very black-white picture, you know, the good guys and the bad guys. I'm even amazed that a lot of people, they don't really even realize the geostrategical location of Iran. For them, it's somewhere over there in the Middle East. And the same with Syria. I mean, a lot of people don't know that the origin of the Ba'ath party, it was socialist party. A lot of people say, okay, the President Bashar al-Assad and his family, they are Alawi, and of course, this can be true, but this is not the, 
the, how can I say, this is not the main factor in Syrian politics. The main factor is the origin of the Ba'ath Party. It's a socialist party where all religions live together. And Syria is one of the few, maybe the only country in the Middle East, where you have all these denominations, Christian, but also Catholic Christian, uh, Orthodox Christian, Greek Orthodox, Maronite, um, Sunni, Shia, Alawi, they are living together for hundreds of years very peacefully. But most people here don't realize this. Uh, Chris Jansen, thanks very much for your time. It was a pleasure.